everybody, this is Terry Darty with the Mom's Choice Awards, and I'm here this afternoon with multi-award winning author Clark Burbage, who has written the series Giants in the Land. Welcome back to the studio. Yeah, it's great to be here again. I love doing this with you. Well, thank you. You know, last year we were here talking about book one. Now we're here to talk about book two. Right. My question for you is, this one is subtitled The Prodigal. Why The Prodigal? Well, it really starts with the grandchildren of the gentleman, Thomas, who was a young man at the time, but is now an older man um, in book one. And so book two starts with their grandchildren, his grandchildren, and their teenagers, uh, a boy and a girl in their mid-teens. And as sometimes we see in real life, uh, the younger people want to, want to kind of separate themselves from their heritage. They want to become their own person. They, and sometimes it leads to becoming distracted and hiding and even getting lost from from the, the, the great people that their ancestors have been and, and not wanting to have to live up to it. And so what we do is we start this story with, with Tommy, who's the grandson, and uh, he is named after his hero grandfather and just can't live up to it. And so he's trying to hide from it. And we follow several other distract people who are distracted or have had their lives sucked out of them for one reason or another because of events. They have to find themselves. So they're kind of prodigals in the, in the definition. And they're thrown into some sudden change and they have to find the greatness within themselves to be able to respond to it. And they're the only ones in a position to save the land. So it's really a very exciting book. Much more adventuresome, would you say, than the first one? Well, I'd say that we've notched up the adventure. We've, we've tuned it up just a little bit, the adventure, a little more intensity, um, a little more peril, all the kind of things that make it fun to write and even more fun to read. Excellent. Now, you were talking about, you know, I'm, as you're talking about the, um, you know, living up to your heritage and trying to figure out who you are and sort of trying to step away, I mean, as a mother of a soon-to-be 13-year-old, I mean, that that is the age where they're really trying to figure out who they are and how they fit in. Right. So what kind of change or sudden event happens in the book that a child, a middle schooler, would say, hey, that's me? Well, you know, Tommy doesn't want to be disrespectful to his parents. He loves his parents, but when they have conversations, they're, he always feels like they're making demands in it. He never quite goes the way he wants to, and he feels bad after, but there's this gap that's being created. But he does have a very close relationship with his younger sister, who is a 13-year-old girl named Rose. And they confide in each other, they can relate to each other. They're, they're friends and not just siblings. And uh, because this is a rough land, uh, there, there are brigands in the land. The individuals go around doing pretty bad things and they attack this uh, cabin that they're at one day and, and Tommy isn't there because he's off daydreaming, okay? And he feels responsible when his young, younger sister is kidnapped and his father and, and uncle are injured so they can't go after him. He's the only one that can go out after him. So you can imagine from going from a boy that's daydreaming in a tree to having to go search for his younger sister is a huge change in his life and he has to rise to the occasion so we all have those things that happen to yes. us things that 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 all of a sudden you know yesterday we can be a kid and then something happens and we realize that today we can't be that way anymore we we have to be different to survive and that's hard mm -hmm. you know watching my daughter it's hard to have watch them they, and they have to navigate it so books right. are such a wonderful way and, and to it's help hard them for the parents too to, to he's the only one that can do it and yet he's never quite been that kind of a person but they they give him all of the resources they can and 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 have faith in him because they're kind of forced to, and uh, and they grow as as well through the process. So it's a real family kind of experience. Well, and that's what I was just thinking, listening to you. It's like I can imagine reading this with your middle school child or your soon-to-be preteen child, and sort of opening discussions or you know just sort of okay, let's get it out there. And yes, it's going to be like this, or mm -hmm. even drawing back on your own stories about oh, when I was 13. 
I remember something like this so that your child right. can connect to it. Right. Well, well, what does the world tell kids nowadays? They t it tells them you're invisible, you can't make a difference, right. so why try? Um, that, that the effort it takes to succeed and find your greatness it, it isn't worth it. And, and yet, and yet the, the book, you can find characters that in a way that young people can relate to really emphasize the point that, that you know, any, all the effort you put into becoming something more than you otherwise would have been is worth it. It makes a difference. You can make your mark in the world. You can affect things around you. You can make a difference. And so don't give up. And uh, lots of times Tommy has a chance to give up, but, but he learns that, uh, that there's a way and there's something great inside him that he finds. He reaches deep down and he discovers it's there and he didn't know. Well, Giants in the Land is making a difference, and I'm so glad you were able to stop by and give us an update. Okay, thank you. It's so nice to see you. Thanks.